Goodbye. That feels weird. It feels really weird. Oh, I probably should have kept the towel on, eh? Whatever. Just go for it. I have never had this done before. Have you ever done this, Craig? No. Never even done it to yourself? No. That fills me with good feelings. <laughs> oh, it's your first time? <laughs> first time you've had to pet you? Yep. First time I've shaved the head. <laughs> Woo! That was Jaggy. Sorry. Maybe, maybe go in at a sort of gentle angle. Be gentle. It's my first time. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was just reading a thread on my Facebook group that I'm in. Well, a bunch of old school heavy metalers, rock fans. And some of the guys were really sad because they'd had to have their hair cut. And they, um, it's a classic case, like when you meet a guy who's of a certain age, he's in the rock scene, the rock a lot of them will go, I used to have hair down to my bum. And you'll be like, is that right, old timer? Because now they've got like really short hair or a big bald patch. Um, but a lot of guys had to get their hair cut for work because of sexism. It's rubbish. You know, they'd go for a job and it'd be like, oh, can't employ you if you've got that long hair. You know, and then um, some some guys started to, to go, you know, to have a bald spot, starting to go thin on top, so they just cut it all off. And then... Um, you could totally feel for them because a lot of your personalities in your hair, especially if you're in the rock scene and you're a guy, you know, and you're doing that kind of John Bon Jovi, White Snake kind of. Who's who's that mob, Craig? That that pastiche crowd. Steel Panther. Steel Panther. You know, they. I think one of them's actually got here, but the rest of them wear wigs. Yeah. Yeah. Really good quality wigs. That's a different subject. But, uh, yeah, but it's your hair's part of your your image. How you see yourself, how you project yourself to others, yeah. So it must be really hard for the guys in the rock scene, and I really do feel for them. Also for guys that aren't in the rock scene when they start to go bald, it's quite traumatic. And then, um, which brings me back to the whole point: if if you're not in control of when you go bald, it can be quite traumatic. But if you take matters into your own hands and you own it, then it's not going to be as bad. Plus, there are worse things in life, like six cycles of chemotherapy, which will last 18 weeks. I'm sure that's not going to be a walk in the park. Uh, and I think shaving the hair off, that's a bit of light relief <laughs> before, you know, the main feature. So that's how I'm, I'm trying to see it. I want to put a positive spin on everything. Even when it gets to the chemo, I'm not going to be sitting here bitching and whinging about it. I want to share updates with everybody. And it, I want to make them as positive as I can. If I don't have a positive comment to make, I'm not going to say it because I don't. A chemotherapy journey is individual to each person. And you're not going to have the same trip as everybody else. And if you have bad side effects, there's a way of letting people, there's a way of communicating that to people without being really down about it and without wallowing in it and without focusing on the the horribleness but the whole point is to try and share the journey and let people know what it's been like for me and what you might expect if you were going on a similar journey but not to get all down in the dumps and dwell on the bad bits and get choked very and very cord on the clippers while you're talking about it hanging on there that, ooh, ooh, look at that do what down there, it's catching the feet. You don't cry, it's looking quite good. All these bits coming off. Tickly. Here now, go, careful. <laughs> I want to keep my ears. I've got good ears for this, haven't I, Craig? Yep. You, I don't think. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think you'd be too happy about it. Too bad, eh? I don't think I had the face for this. Somebody said I had good bone structure. 
um, I've, got, I've got quite good um, cheekbones, but I don't know about the rest of it, but someone said, oh, you've got a really pretty face, you look great, and I thought, oh, that's really sweet. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't look that bad. I remember one time when I was um, studying acting at Breed Care College in Paisley, which is now uh, West College, Scotland. I remember I got my hair cut, quite short, not this short, but kind of like a crop. And my head lecturer, Morven, was devastated. Well, maybe not devastated, maybe horrified is the right word. Because that year we were going to be casting um, Little Women. We were going to be doing a version of Little Women. And uh, Leon was going to be directing it, one of my other lecturers. And Morven was horrified that I had my hair all cut off. <laughs> because she's going, oh no, we're going, to, we we're going to be doing a period piece and wanted all your long hair and up in that big bun and stuff. And I was like, Marvin, I'll wait a while. <laughs> but um, we ended up not doing it. Because Leon discovered she was pregnant. That's how long ago that was. That was, um, you were expecting Maria, Leon. So what's that? She's just turned nine, hasn't she? So that was that was the last time I had a short haircut. <laughs> not as short as this. And not as short as it's going to be. Do you notice how you've still got a part in? Yep. <laughs> That's mad. Um, it feels like velvet, which I know my friend Laurel McCaughey would be like, oh, book, that's horrible because he hates velvet. Right, what now? Do we need to clip it shorter or can we just go with the razor? Nope. Clip it shorter. Clip it shorter. Okay. Ugh.